Amen. For her and for uh, Makaya and for Robert uh, Gresham. And I'm happy to see uh, all of you, uh, Donna uh, Gresham, especially and my good friend Vanessa, uh, who's taking care of her dad. We're just happy to see all of you uh, this morning to Michelle and Tony and to all of you and to the bowlers. Amen. Amen. Y'all want to know the results? Amen. I had to go get my big son. Uh-oh. You're him in the back there. The hand on my wife, but she was rolling me over, Michelle. So I called my big baby. And Ron handled the baby. One game. She said one game. But she's not even winning the second game. She showed up. See, now you're on the list now, bro. Good luck with that. But we certainly enjoyed ourselves, and we thank all of you who were able to come and participate. I believe next month, uh, we'll be showing uh, a movie, I believe we will, uh, for a fellowship. Uh, I believe it's the shack uh, that we're going to have is a church-wide fellowship. I hear you. Yeah. And we're going to have a movie uh, next month as a church-wide fellowship. So we thank God for all those who participated, for those who prayed for us. And Pastor going to need a cane. Earl, where you cane? I'm going to need a cane. I don't want one. Don't want you one. All right. Um, Shall we stand for the word of God? I'm having a thought. Shall we stand for the word of God? <laughs> All right, we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> All right, we're so happy to see everyone. Turn, if you will, uh, in your word of God, your Bible, to Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11. Romans. The fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11. Now, if you have a highlighter, a pen, pencil, you have, you have to prick your finger and draw blood, <laughs> take a mascara pen or pencil, whatever you have, you, know, you need to mark this chapter up. Because theologians believe, Dr. Barry, that this is one of the finest chapters in the whole word of God. This is saying something. Paul took his time to pen this for us. And we just want to look at 11 verses this morning uh, and to share uh, what God has um, for us from this text. Romans 5, 1 through 11. We found it. Say amen. amen. If you do not have a Bible, raise your hand and we will give you one. Amen. You will need one to follow along. Amen. Amen. All right, from the King James Version. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, but whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, who is given to us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And our only son, but we also joy in God through Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. Amen. 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 Be seated in the presence of God. And just for a brief moment, I am not going to be long because the playoffs are over. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, 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 so in reality, I have about four hours. That's right. Amen. 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 Amen.
I guarantee you, if I'm more than 40 minutes, y'all can come get me. We will. We will. <laughs> and I'll probably go with you, too. But no, all, all um, amen. Uh, it's certainly good to me. Uh, sometimes silly in the Lord. Sometimes people take God too sober. It's okay to be sober in Him, but I believe we can have fun with God. Amen. God amen. wants us to have fun. Uh, uh, somebody, you got somebody sucking on lemons, kept all day long, oh, looking amen. sad and sorry and mad at the world. But Christians can have fun. Amen. 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 We had it amen. yesterday. Yeah. We had a glorious time. Uh, um, at the palace lanes. But I believe that every now and then it's okay to laugh uh, uh, along with God. Because uh, here, here we are, here's one thing I know is true. He showed up laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff he see us doing, God be tickling them. But anyway, um, let me lift up a, a prayer. Father, in Jesus' name and your spirit, we thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity and the privilege to come into your presence. I got and uh, certainly find your peace your promises, and your power. We thank you for uh, uh, Joe and for Sean yes, uh, and for those who accompanied them and, and them and the singing of the songs and for the AV staff, for our ushers, and even for those that are uh, in these seasons, the children throughout this church and our teachers. We're so grateful, God, that ministry uh, goes forward, that needs be met. And God, you declare that you would have us uh, in the hollow of your hand and that you would keep us as the apple of your eye. So hide us behind your cross. Keep us under the dripping of your blood across our chest and in our minds and in our hearts the words that are found in the gospel according to John, the 12th chapter and the 21st verse, sir. We would see Jesus. It's all about him. Yes, Lord. That's what Joe was saying in his song. In all the songs we sung, it's all about him. We desire and need another look at him this morning. Amen. 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 I got a witness. Amen. 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 That's Joe, Joe? Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> I think you got to sing it in him, Joe. Amen. Amen. So we're happy. I know. Let him go. He all right. Let him go. That probably be the only noise I get this morning. Come on now. <laughs> I, I like him already. <laughs> Amen, church. So two weeks ago, church, we had begun our series, uh, Peace uh, with God. And, and we had arrived uh, uh, at this series from the Beatitude, uh, Matthew 5, 9. Uh, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. It was two weeks ago we defined what peace was. Uh, peace is a state of quiet or, or tranquility and freedom from disturbance or agitation uh, applicable to society and individuals or to temper uh, of the mind. Uh, freedom from agitation or disturbance by the passions and from fear, terror, uh, anger, yes. and or anxiety. And so we went on from there and we defined uh, enmity for you, which is where I want to stick and stay somewhat this morning and park my car and get out and come on in the house because it's the quality of being an enemy, the opposite of friendship. And that's important, Earl, for us as we close towards the end of the sermon to understand that we were opposite of friendship with God. Amen. We were opposed to him before we said yes to him. Yes. Uh, we were enemies and we were rebellious. We were hellions at best. Do I have any saved folks here this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Are am I in the right church? Are y'all been saved? Yeah. 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 This might not be for you, but 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 for, for enmity is ill will and hatred, uh, unfriendly dispositions, malevolence, and expresses more than aversion and less than malice and differs. And this is where we were two weeks ago. It differs from displeasure and denoting a fixed hatred. There's a difference, Kim. Because when you just outright hate somebody, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, Ralph, it's for a good reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one time somebody told us to hate him, and we did. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. No reason. Amen. Somebody caught that. Thank Amen. You no reason. Yeah. But nine times out of ten, but that's not what God and, and what our relationship Amen. with God is. Because we don't outright just hate him. Watch this. The second half of the definition is, whereas displeasure is more transient. Now, we may have a displeasure with God. But it's not an outright hatred for God. Amen. All right. 
So, so, so we defined that for us, and then we discovered the truth, uh, uh, Joe, in Romans 3, 9 through 18, that there was none of us who are righteous. No, not one. Chris, there's none of us that understands, there's none of us that seeketh after God. In fact, the word goes on and tells us that all have sinned and all have fallen short of his glory. And Jesus had come to offer himself as a substitutionary sacrifice in our place. Jesus Rick, would take our sin and God's wrath in an effort that God would be satisfied with and bring peace between God and us. That is the real reason for Christmas. We missed that. He came that we might have peace with God. That's why, Larry, the word says when, when, when Jesus was born in peace toward all men, Jesus brings the peace that we need in, in an effort to have a relationship with God. Until then, Henrietta, we're just rebellious, we're hellions, we're not worthy of his love, and yet he still loved us enough Amen. that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for us. Amen. Until then, church, we were at war with God. Amen. We opposed God, Rick. We were rebellious toward him, and we were worthy of death. Now, we lifted up four things uh, a few weeks ago, and I need to have it just for the memory uh, uh, so we can pull back into this text. Uh, that we lifted up from the sermon and personal uh, relationship with God was number one. That what Jesus did when the propitiation that he, or the complete sacrifice that he made brought us into a personal relationship with God. This is not about religion, church. That's right. Religion is a duty. Amen. It's a checklist. Yep. I came to New Antioch. Check. I sat in my favorite seat. Check. I heard Joe sing my, well, maybe he didn't sing my favorite song. Check. I gave my offering. Check. How long is Phil's going to preach? Check. I want to go home and see the football game. Check. And so it's not about religion, it's about a relationship right. with a living God. That's right. We said in the Bible study a few weeks ago, I don't know if anyone can who is in a relationship, and it's a one-sided affair. Well, That's an oxymoron. You can't, well, maybe you can be in a relationship, and it be one-sided. But it's not the relationship where two people are engaged with each other, and understand each other, and talk to each other, and spend time with each other. That's right. That's a real relationship. So number two, we talked about personal righteousness of God, that we receive the righteousness of God through the sacrifice that Jesus had bought. Number three, personal redemption by God, that Christ purchased us with his very blood, that he brought us back from sin into fellowship with God. And then number four, personal revelation from God. There was a personal understanding and information uh, that we got from God. And let me say this while I'm here. Uh, uh, this is not about information. It's not. This is about transformation. Because you can have information and never be transformed. That's right. So we want to make that clear. That God wants us to have revelation that transforms us into his son, Christ. Amen? Amen. So as we close that text and that sermon through a few weeks ago, we close with the personal restoration uh, that God uh, had given us and that will be restored back to him. Now, leading up to our text in Romans 4, reveals to us Abraham's justification. Mm -hmm. That is here, Paul establishes and contends uh, uh, that his justification was not a works, uh, but that Abraham believed God, and because he believed God, that's why we were playing Marvin Sapp and, and Joe sung those songs, uh, is the fact that it's going to take our belief. That's the only thing that God is interested in. Amen. Is whether or not we believe what he's saying. Yeah. Amen. On the inverse, Tony, Satan wants to have you doubt the very thing that God said. Amen. And so if he can cause doubt and cause us to fear and cause us to tremble and shake, watch this, and crumble like a rich cracker every time we broke a, break a nail, okay. then God is saying we need to hold on unto his unchanging word Amen. and believe what he said. Yeah. I had a situation, I'm on script already, I had a situation at work that, that, that messed me up. It's always about work. And so God said to me, uh, Joe, right after you called, what are you talking about? 
all that stuff you think people going to do to you at work, they can't do nothing Hallelujah. to you unless I know about it. That's right. And all of a sudden in my spirit, I began to wax strong and said, you know what? My God is bigger than this company. Yeah, That's yeah. right. My God has a paycheck, and if he wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about what folks are saying about That's me. Right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Go ahead. Mm. Wow. Some of us, not here maybe, others are, are, are concerned about whether God can handle a government shutdown. Come on, preacher. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. God is the government. Yes, Amen. He is. Yes, he is. This is a facsimile of on Pennsylvania Avenue up on that part of town. God is the Supreme Court. Yes, he is. And he is the government. And so he can handle that which he said he would do and he's able to perform it. So while we are, 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 are looking at this, that, that Jesus in, in chapter 3, we talked about had come to offer himself the substitutionary sacrifice uh, uh, in our place. And so leading up to our text, we wanted to share with you that Paul is actually talking to Jewish believers who believe the law is all they have to do to be righteous before God. Mm -hmm. And so he contends in chapter 5 that the law has nothing to do with your righteousness in Christ Jesus. Come on. Has nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not dismissing the law. I don't want you to go out here and just break the law. Because right. <laughs> there are consequences to the law. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So the law is still active, but Jesus says, I did not come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. And so it's through him that we have our righteousness and we're able uh, uh, to get into God's presence. So the promise that, that Abraham uh, was given unto, from God, uh, that he should be heir of the world, was not given to him through the law. The law had nothing to do with it but through the righteousness of faith. Abraham said, I just believe you. I believe your word is true. And I count, and God counted it as righteousness on Abraham's account. So watch this. So, 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 so uh, Malaysia is with faith uh, that we believe Jesus is our righteousness and we become justified uh, before God. Next to our text, uh, 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 the record declares that in 4.18 uh, through verses 25 that, that Abraham uh, was told, and, and I'm going to surmise, uh, that he was going to have a baby uh, 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 and Sarah, his wife, who was past barren years, mm -hmm. uh, y'all know the story, and, 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 and Abraham uh, uh, considered that, that God would hold fast to his promise uh, that the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God the glory. And being fully persuaded that he had promised he was able to perform it. Yeah. So that's, a, 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 for me, Henrietta, a check that I'm going to cash from now on. Come on. That God is able to do what he said he will perform. Yeah. You don't have to worry or fret or be afraid or fear what man can do. That's right. Amen. Come on, y'all. So, 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 so it took me a minute, and I wanted to, to go and look at the word believe since it's Abraham's faith uh, before our text that is on the docket at this moment. And so, Kim, what, what the word believe means when defined is a faith or a trust, a, a rely or a confidence, and a persuasion and an assurance. So, so listen to the middle part. To credit upon the authority or testimony of another. To be persuaded of the truth of something upon the declaration of another or upon the evidence furnished by reasons, arguments, and deductions of the mind or by other circumstances than personal knowledge. So I just said a whole lot, and I'm almost out of breath, Dr. Berry, but let me slow down and tell you what that definition is saying. That I don't have to have personal knowledge to believe what God has said. Amen. I don't have to see it all the time. I just know if he said it, I'm going to start believing it. That's right. That's I'm going right. to start walking in it. I'm going to start claiming what he said, watch this, according to his word found in these pages. And so with that in mind, when we believe upon the authority of another, we always put confidence. Uh, watch this, that thousand dollar word veracity just means in his faithfulness. And I heard Joe sing these songs uh, this morning. It's all about God's faithfulness. I don't know of anybody else uh, Malaysia who is as faithful as God is. Amen. God never sleeps nor slumbers. Amen. 
He's always watching out for us. Yeah, and so it's his faithfulness uh, that we can look at and, and hold on to, Deacon Marshall. And into our text, uh, there are five uh, benefits uh, of believing that we want to lift up for you this morning. Uh, and then we'll go watch the championship game. So watch this. Five things. And, and so in, in verse one, let me go slow. Paul says, therefore... Uh, being justified. That word being is important because it's already happened. Mm -hmm. Being justified is already taking place. So what that tells me, Deacon Marshall and church, there's nothing I can do, Michelle, Come on. to bring my own justification to God. Wow. It's already been done. Amen. Amen. And so therefore being justified, what? here's how we're justified, by believing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you're justified by faith, watch this, Deacon Gillison, we have peace with God. Amen. Amen. And so the peace that we have, uh, 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 we're no longer opposing God. We're no longer rebellious against God. Uh, no more intimacy with, between God and us. Watch this, church. The war is over. Amen. 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 The war is over. Or it should have been over. The war, and watch this, Dr. Mary. Forever. Mm. <laughs> the war is over forever. When you're in Christ Jesus, there is no more war. We don't have to fight God. Come on. We're simply uh, on his side, and the war is over forever. The end of our conflict with God, Jesus has provided, paid the price and the penalty that the holy and righteous God demanded. And so we have been declared not guilty, and I said this earlier, before the Supreme Court, and God no longer holds those who believe in Jesus Christ as those who oppose him and his will. Let me park my car and come in. The war I said is over. Amen. Forever. Amen. It's over. You have peace. We have peace with God. The war is over forever. Number two, the believer has access to God. Watch this. By whom we have, verse 2, we have access by faith into this grace. Because our sin has separated us from God, our sin in his presence is never allowed nor tolerated because he's a holy God. God would not allow sin for us access into his presence, uh, and also he would never give us admission to come there. See, in the Old Testament, it was unconscionable uh, not even a thought and wholly unthinkable church that anyone with sin could have access to God. Amen. There were all kinds of sacrifices that had to be offered that were performed and atonement was made, but that was done by the high priest on behalf of the people and behind a veil in the Holy of Holies. Can I take Amen. my time with this? Yeah. And, and, and so, but now the veil has been torn down. The curtain has been removed. We have access by the sacrifice of Jesus and his blood. We don't need to make any more animal sacrifices. We don't need the blood of rams. We don't need the blood of bullocks. We don't need the blood of sheep. We don't need to someone tell someone our confession in a booth. We don't need to have our on a television or a radio. We don't need to purchase money water from the Scioto River. We don't need a seed offering. Come on. Come on. Purchase a prayer cloth that has no real power. Hebrews declare that now that we have access with God, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy in the time of need. We have access to his presence and obtain his peace, promises, and his power. We have access. What does that mean, Larry? And, 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 and let me help uh, understand this. Nowadays, if you go over to England, uh, uh, before the mom queen, uh, you got to be announced. Yeah. Yeah. There has to be an introduction. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you better have a purpose for why you want to see her. Mm -hmm. But now with God, you don't need none of that. I can just walk in. If this on. pillow is in presence, <laughs> I can just come on it as foul as I am, yeah. as wretched yeah. yeah. as yeah. I am, yeah. as sinful yeah. as yeah. I am, yeah. as messed up, mixed up, and crazy as I am. I can get into his presence because the blood of Christ Amen. Amen. Give me access. Amen. Oh, that's good news yes. this morning. Yes. 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 Mm. I may not even make it to the White House. I may not ever shake the president's hand. May not ever cross paths with the rich and famous. 
I may not run in those circles, Gail. I may not even be invited to any of their social settings and events. Mm. And I'm good with that. Amen. But there is a name above all names. Hallelujah. But I do have access ah. to the most powerful name yes. in the universe. I can call him yes. any time of day or yes. night. Amen. Yes. Jesus. He never sleeps. Amen. Never slumber. He's a friend, Rick. At midnight. You come to my house at midnight. Good luck with that. <laughs> You know who's going to beat you? ADT. <laughs> Strange and danger. Somebody's at my door. But he never sleeps. Never slumbers. He is a friend at midnight. Watch this, Dr. Barry. When I call him, Pastor Ron, I don't get a voicemail. Come on. I don't get call waiting. Amen. I don't get placed on hold and then the call drops. Amen. He's always available when we need him. He may not show up when you want him, but he's always right on time. Right on time. Right on time. We have access. Yeah. Wherein we stand are in this grace. Paul saying it's our permanent and secure position. Amen. Permanent. Nothing can change the grace that we stand in. Amen. And it's secure. Yes. I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. Amen. Oh, yes. That I found someone and something that's secure Amen. and permanent Amen. and doesn't crumble like a rich cracker. Amen. We have access. And Paul goes on and says, and not only so in verse 3, but we glory in tribulation. And he says that in, in verse 2 that if the eternal is established and we are secure and have permanent position, then we need to understand that the earth which we live on, that we're going to have troubles and trials and tribulations. Yeah. That's right. Amen. He says, uh, 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 don't be fooled by that because we all uh, 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 will have, because our relationship with Jesus Christ the world is at enemy, intimate, and at war with God. So you and I can expect some turbulence every now and then. That's right. You can expect some tribulations. You can expect some trouble. But Paul says, uh, even though we are stretched, and even though we are strained, and even though we have struggled, but it's through these difficulties that produces God's spiritual kindness and favor. Let me set something up here because I get sometimes weary of... Uh, of Preachers and, 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 and folks, uh, not all of them, talking about God's favor, Kim, mm, and, and, and they put it in a material form of uh, value. Preach, yeah. Reverend. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Preach, God. But it has nothing to do with material value. That's right. Why would an eternal God give us something, Joe, that's not going to last and going to pass away? Hallelujah. And so, yeah, I, I, I said this one time, and I got a lot of hate mail, a lot of emails and, and calls, and I said this uh, very clearly, that there is a difference between blessing and provision. That's right. That's Huge right. Difference. That's right. The material things God will provide for us because we're his children, but they don't last always. But it's his blessings which are spiritual, Jeremiah which we can hold on to. I need to know, yeah. uh, Nicole, yeah. that in the midnight hour, yeah. when something's on my mind and rocking me from side to side, yeah. can his peace enter in yeah. and put me to sleep? Yeah. Sure can. I is. want to know if I can have joy in the midst, even of this government yeah. shutdown. Can I have joy? Yeah. Sure yeah. can. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's the blessing of God. Amen. His provisions, yes, he provides for us. Yes, he will take care of us. But don't get it twisted and stuck on provision and think God is a spiritual genie and a bellhop at Walmart to bring you your order whenever you want something. That's right. Come on. Right. Preach it, Reverend. Right. Preach it, Reverend. Hallelujah. Right. But he will bring peace. Yes, he will bring joy. He will keep us calm. Yes. He will yes. stick and stay. Yes. He's not a fair weather friend. That's right. That's right. Folks you. talk about this favor. And I'm blessed. Yes. But whether I have a bank account or not, I'm still blessed. Amen. Right. Amen. Even if all the bills don't get paid, AEP got enough money, they be all right. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't going broke for my little $50. But I'm still blessed. All right. 
And so we have to get past the idea that in these tribulations, Paul says, listen, I'm not on the sideline pouting and, and worrying and complaining and feeling a pity party for myself. He says we glory in these tribulations. Mm -hmm. Paul understands that unless we're stretched, that unless we're strained, and unless we struggle, you'll never grow up. Amen. I don't want to be a pygmy in my spiritual relationship with God. Come on, sir. Running around 50 years in the church and only three feet tall. Mm. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yeah. Right. Amen. I want to go. I, I like what Dr. Thomas said to me uh, two Wednesdays ago. Tony Thomas said to me at the end of the Bible study. He said, Pastor, I'm coming to Bible study because I want to grow in my relationship with Christ. And that, my brother, is exactly what we want to talk about today. Yes. We are not remain standing. It's going. You going to have to go through some stuff. To grow up in some stuff. Come on. It's going to take some time for us to understand it. Listen, can you imagine, because uh, you're too close to the front row. Comedians tell you never sit in the front row. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to say that to you. Take on you. But can you imagine, just me and you here right now, uh, what it would be like if there was no trouble in your life? Mm -hmm. Somebody said amen. No, you better not say amen. Mm -hmm. Because you become stagnant. Yeah. And there is no growth. Can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, yeah. where, where, where we came from, and you probably have to, our early days, we didn't have two nipples and a dime to rub Amen. together. Amen. Amen. No, we did, and a pot, and you know what to throw it out of. <laughs> no window was there. In fact, we only had one pot. And all we ate was hot dogs. Amen. Dice, cut, cook, boil, bacon. <laughs> Fries, however you want to have it. <laughs> But now look at us. Hallelujah. Look how far God has brought us. And I'm not talking about material things. That's it was right. just the trust that God would take care of us. Yes. That's right. My father-in-law said to me, Tony, I thought you would have called home by now. Mm. I have another daddy. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, preacher. Amen. Who's able. Tell us about, about it. Come on. He said, I thought by now y'all would have a little problem with a spot of bother that you might call me and no. When you take the Abraham approach and trust God and leave family and friends and everything else behind and follow him, God will take care of you. Right. I'm a witness to that. Amen. I know he will. I know he will. How long we been in Ohio? 20, what, 27. 20, yeah, 27 years. Never look back. Mm. That's God. I'm not talking about us. That's a testament to God. That's right. And what he's able and what he will do. Listen, we only believe. That when the phone call came around, and I said to her, we're moving to Ohio. She said, where? And I said, Ohio, where's, where's, where's in Ohio? <laughs> and I knew she was Sarah in that moment, and I was Abraham. But here's what I knew, church, that God was calling us here. Come on, come wow. on. And if I would have told him, no, I'd have never seen this day that I'm looking at. Hallelujah. Right so I said to God, I got friends back in Philadelphia. Over 300 of them. He said, no worries. I give you 3,000 of them. Amen. Ah. Amen. I got more yes, friends in yes, Ohio yes, than I had in Philadelphia. Yes, 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 yes. And it was just her and I and a new wall truck when we started. Wow. Right. So I know about God's yes. power. Go and I know you do too. So, 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 so watch this. That, that in these tribulations, uh, you're going to have them, but it's going to work our patience. In other words, uh, Deacon Marshall, that if, if we don't have a spot of bother, We'll never know what endurance is all about. Come on, Pete. You have to have endurance to see this three, this thing through. This is not a sprint. That's right. I wish it was a hundred yard dash, Destiny. I'd have been there yesterday. <laughs> but it's a marathon. And we have to take our time with God and know that in the tribulation, he will give us endurance, and that endurance will work the experience, and experience will bring the hope, and hope will not make us ashamed. Watch this because of the love of God in us. Yes. And, so, and so watch this. So, so the believer has peace with God. The believer has access to God. The believer has assurance from God. And number five, the believer is dwelt, indwelt, by God. And so this is a big moment for us uh, to take our time in verse 5 because the love of God is shed abroad uh, in our hearts. I, I said it before, uh, Dr. Barry, and I'll say it again, Elder Smith, that, that when we sit down and think about the love that God has for us, mm. it ought to blow you away. That's right. right. I, I don't take it for granted, Kim. I had a lot of loves in my life. 
I thought it was love anyway. Puppy love, I guess it was. Amen. But when the love of God is embracing you and you know it's him, wow. there is no other Amen. love, Barry Pollard, wow. that I know of, watch this, that looks beyond all my faults and accepts me for who I am. Amen. I don't know of any love that looks beyond all my mistakes, Joe, and never even talks about it. What I like about God, I'm here for a moment, what I like about God is this, Michelle, is that I can tell God anything. Anything. Watch this, Sean, and he won't tell nobody else. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anything. That's how deep his love is. I can trust him, uh, 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 Brandon, with my innermost moments and situations in my life and know that he won't tell nobody else. Amen. You know why I'm glad he won't tell nobody else? Joe, because they couldn't handle it. Amen. They would crumble like a rich cracker. Mm. Yeah. Come on. And so we, we, we uh, are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Now, now here's something that, that I want you to look at hard and long. is the fact that, that this love uh, 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 that God is talking about uh, uh, is agape love. It's in spite of love. And the Holy Spirit, uh, Joe Dina, is, is, is an individual, and I heard Joe say it in his, in his uh, presentation of the selection he gave us, uh, uh, this triune God that we serve, uh, people forget about the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen. They do. Or they think, Destiny, that if I foam at the mouth and fall down in this aisle and do convulsion, I got him. <laughs> Amen. Or maybe if I just stick a dolly on top of my head and walk around holding him down, I, I, I got him. Amen. Maybe if I say a couple of words, Preach. I am on a and some good theological definitions and blow you away, that boy sure is full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, sir. Preach it, Reverend. But he could be full of the Holy Devil. Amen. When the Holy Ghost is in us, and he is, the moment we say yes to Christ, he seals us with his spirit. Now let me work this and come out of it real quick. And so Ron, for years, uh, when I got saved, I didn't know about the Holy Ghost. No one ever taught me about him. Wow. All they did was took me in the back, Chris, and said, what can you do? Mm. Do you want to usher? You want to park cars? Do you sing? Well, that one was out anyway. I don't say nothing. <laughs> but no one taught me about the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. or who he was or what he does. And he is a part of the equation that when we get saved, you're sealed with him. And, and can, can I borrow you for a minute? And, and, so, and so what happens, uh, uh, Shalise, watch this. Come. And so what happens is, wherever I go, Kip is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> The gold just smiled. <laughs> but he goes with me. Amen. Everywhere. That's right. Amen. And here's what he is, Robert. Notice I'm saying him. Yeah. He's not an it. That's right. He's a person. And so when I go, he goes. I can't let him go. Now, some folks say that I have to yield to him, and I do. But he still doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I still have a choice to make a decision. Come on. And, and listen, when I think about doing Jodina, what I ought not be doing, Come on. Romans 7. Come on. Yeah. He, him, <laughs> would whisper to me, no, you can't do that. Amen. But I still have to make a choice. That's right. That's right. He is an enabler. He enables me and you to live the Christian life. And the reason why folks, Robert, are walking around powerless is because they don't allow, they don't know and they don't allow him to activate and be activated in their lives, give them the power and the strength to walk the Christian walk. Amen. The only way we're going to do it is through Him. That's right. Amen. If you're trying to do the Holy Spirit without our uh, church, without Him, or the Christian walk without Him, come on, tell it. Tell it. Somebody said it won't work. You're absolutely right. God gave Him to us so that He would enable us. The Greek word is the Parakletos. He's called alongside of us, and so now he enables me to walk the Christian life that God is asking me to live. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so without him, I can't do it on my own. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's why in Romans 5, Paul said that he had dwelt us with the Holy Spirit so that we'd be able to live the Christian life. That's important for us uh, to grasp this morning and to understand. So watch this. He says the love of God has been poured out the evidence that we belong to him. Um, and the Holy Spirit was given to us. He's an enabler. He's the paracletos called alongside of us. 
uh, uh, that we now have the power and the ability to produce God-like characteristics and conduct. Yeah. Believers are sealed with the Holy Spirit who will testify we belong to God and God's love for us. It's through him that you testify. That God loves us. Amen. Oh man, let me mess with this yeah. one. The Holy Spirit is a constant companion. Mm -hmm. He will lead us into all truth, convict us of all sin, yes. and remind us the need we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So watch this and we're coming to a close. Next point. The believer is preserved in God. Verses 6 through 11. Let me read those. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would even die or dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. That's right. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Let me hold verse 11 and give you this. The believer is preserved in God. So our salvation is secure. Let me mess with the prepositional phrase without strength. Because that says a lot uh, 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 today when I know, uh, Russell, that, that, that there are billions of dollars spent. Thank you, microphone. <laughs> on folks who work out. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, I know working out is good, and I, I used to, and, and <laughs> I don't have that energy no more. Uh, and I know it preserves life, and I get that. But it's not the only thing in this life that we could, should be concerned about. Let me give you an example, and if I'm calling it right, I know someone's going to Google it and find out. Uh, uh, Jim Fix was a runner mm -hmm. for many years. Tremendous shape. Ran marathons. One day he just happened to stop breathing mm -hmm. and his heart gave out. Wow. For many years, he had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And so I know the value of physical workout and, and, and exercising. I get that. The, and the older we get, the more we should have. Uh, uh, and we're eating right and trying to do that. But this is not the strength God is talking about. Amen. Paul is talking about without strength, Sean. He says we were helpless, we were ungodly, we were sinners, and we were enemies of God. And then the word, the next prepositional phrase says, in due time. God said, in due time, I'm going to send my son. And he sent him in the fullness of time that you and I could become in relationship with him again. Yes. And so when he says he, he died for us, here's how he did it. In due time, he died for us on the cross. Watch this. And so Ron, the, the text is so plain and simple. Watch this, Rick. And here's what blew my mind about this text. It doesn't say anything else other than he died for us. Mm. Amen. So that tells me it didn't take me prompting or hollering or calling out to God, I need you. He did it on his own. Wow. That's how deep his love is. Yes. Now, and so Paul goes even further if you're reading the text. Prior adventure, a righteous man would die. Now, I may step in front of a car for some people, but some people I ain't gonna move a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all too sober here. <laughs> so Paul says even a righteous man would even think about Amen. dying for someone else, even dare to die. But because of the love of God, he simply just died for us. Wow. Amen. Amen. I don't know how that rocks your boat, but boy, mine is tipped over. I'm swimming ashore. Hallelujah. It should waken us up and thank God every day for his love. Amen. Amen. It's not like I'm worthy of it. I don't deserve it. He just simply flat out loves me. And I walk around with it. Stick your chest up. Hold your head up. He loves us. In spite of. Amen. Some of us couldn't deal with each other. Come on, somebody. Amen. Thank you, Sandra. But the text says he just died for us. He committed his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. He demonstrated his love. And he says we're reconciled to God through Jesus' death. Now, the word reconciled, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And we are saved from wrath. We are reconciled. And watch this. Not only did he die to save us, this is going to mess you up. He now lives to maintain us. Mm. Well, I don't say nothing else to go to this hour. That's the keeper. Not only did he die for us, Russell, he now lives to maintain us. Amen. Because a lot of us, we're some work. We're a piece of work now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 I don't know about you. Let me just go. Amen. I'm going to talk about it. He not only died so that we may live, but now he lives so that we may be maintained. Amen. My God. Amen. Even while we're here on this walk. So he says, and I'm closing, watch this, that, 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 he, he certainly died for us that while we were yet without strength, and he reconciled us, and the word reconcile, and, and the whole point, part of this, this sermon is to get you to see this close, that our opposition to God has changed. We now become friends with God. Ooh, amen. Thank Jesus. Amen. So you mean to tell me, Earl, that Jesus died for me even though I didn't have anything to do with it or merit it, it was undeserved, and he loves me that much that he gives me his Holy Spirit mm. to live the life that he's calling me to live, and now we are no longer opposed to each other. We're now friends. Mm. How many of us have friends? <laughs> you have friends? Amen. Amen. Do, do, do you talk to your friends all the time? Yes. Pretty much. I mean, let me, let me qualify. How about your bestie? Amen. Your best friend. Yeah, your best friend. Yes. You, you can, thank you, kid. You, you can just talk to your bestie about anything. Yes. And his, your bestie won't let it go. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ralph. If they love you like they, they should be your. Amen. If they let it go, they ought not be your bestie. Amen. You know what they should be? Your worstie. Amen. I say that to her. she's my bestie. I can say anything, and I can talk to her about anything. She knows the ins and outs. And God is just like that. And now we've changed from opposing Him to being His friend. Now, Jesus says, "I no longer call you a servant." But I now call you friend. And the friend, according to Jesus' terms, this is going to mess you up, is someone who's in on the plan of salvation with him. Come on. Mm. Come on. Wow. So I, I, if I'm going to call him, he's my friend. He's my friend. Yeah. Can't nobody yeah. do me like Jesus. Yeah. can I'm not, I'm not Joe Ray, but I'm close. Do me like the Lord. Okay, no. And then we go, yeah, do me like Jesus. Let me hear. He's my And you know what we sing? That we're in on the plan of salvation. And that we will walk with him wherever we go and carry out the word of God to whomever we meet. Because Jesus' friends are those who are in on the plan. Yes. They understand what love it took for them to be delivered and saved, and now they render themselves Amen. and submit everything they have to their new friend Jesus. Yeah. I once was on this side of the ledger where I was a debit. Come on. But because of the love of God and Jesus pulling me over on this side, when, watch this, when I believe I'm now a credit. Amen. On this side, I was a liability. On this side, I'm an asset. Mm -hmm. So when we change from en enmity to friendship with God, understand what we're getting ourselves into. Mm -hmm. That wherever we go, we should represent who he is. That's right. right. Folks today are looking for God. Yes, yes they are. Yes, ask the folks who are, who are, who are interfering with because of the government shutdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not even one of them. I'm, I'm still 
interested in what's going on. But I do know that God is a God who, who, who can change our position from opposing him to being on his side. Amen. And I don't know about you, but since I changed partners, <laughs> life has gotten a lot better for me. Amen. Yes, it has. I told you earlier, we didn't have two nipples and a dime to rub together, nor a pot, nor a window to throw anything out of them. And God saw to it that now we can just go anywhere. Amen. Come on, somebody. Can I just start with the plain mundane stuff? Amen. Walk through the closet and look for clothes that don't right. even make no sense. All of these shoes and right. go downstairs. Come on, Sam. Yeah. Not in your house. <laughs> go up in the refrigerator and just start looking. I don't see my neighbor like I used to see. When I open my fridge, you get on the way home. Right. <laughs> I now see some food in my. Amen. Amen. Can I just make it plain here we are? I can just go anywhere and select some things that I never had a chance, Brandon. Amen. Come on. Because I signed up and aligned myself with the God of my salvation. I gotta get out of here. The buzzer just went off. So watch this. I believe God because he is our great high priest. That's right. I believe God because he is our advocate. I believe God because he is our mediator. I believe God because he is our deliverer. I believe God because he is our intercessor. I believe God because he is our chief shepherd. I believe God because he is the head of this body. That's right. I believe God because he's our bright and morning star. I believe God, Sean, because he is the rose of Sharon. Amen. I believe God because Jodina, he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Hallelujah. I believe God because he's a friend yes. at midnight. Yes. I believe God because he has helped Dick and Marshall yes. in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. I believe God because he is my light and my salvation. Yes, whom shall I, I be fear. afraid? Yes. He is the light and my strength. Of whom, whom shall, shall I fear? fear? Yeah. Call him wonderful. Call him counselor. Yes. Call him mighty God. Yes. Call him the everlasting father. Yes. Call yes. him the, the prince, prince of peace. Yes. Call yes. him the deliverer. Yes. Call him our protector. Call him our provider. He was yes. wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yes. Upon him the stripes were laid and with him we have peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what I'm trying to get yes. to. Peace yes. in God. Yes. Not absence of the storms, but when the storms come, when God says, like Kip was my Holy Ghost, right. I'm going to walk with you and we're going through the storm. Okay. I stop asking yeah. God to take yeah. storms away right. because now I know they grow me up big and strong. Right. So the next time the storm comes knocking yeah. at my door, right. I can say, what do you want? Come on in. Because the God I serve yeah. is bigger than oh. you. That ever comes through my door. Thank God for trials. Thank you for tribulation. Because it grows us up and matures us. And we have a certainty that God will deliver us. Yes, he will. Because he's able. Hallelujah. He never leave us. Now I have peace. Not only peace with God. I have access to him. Amen. That's right. I'll wear him out. That's right. <laughs> Amen. I know I can't. That's a spiritual oxymoron, but I tried to. <laughs> you again? Yeah, it's me again. <laughs> oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Right. Right. I'm a Amen. customer. Yeah. I'm often wrong. Yeah. That's right. I just don't walk in tiptoeing either. I come in kicking the door down because I need your help in the time of my prayer. That's right. Unashamedly, right. I need his help. Amen. I ain't gonna be cute with it, Robert. Right. Oh, I think I need you, Lord. No, I need you. Come on, Holy Ghost. You gotta stop being cute with this thing. Every now and then, my hair should be messed up. Yeah. Now and then, it's all right to shed a tear. Yes, it is. It's all right to cry. Amen. Because we have a God That's right. who will wipe every oh, tear. Yes. Yes. We have peace with him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, Amen. for your sacrifice. So when you go out of here, I don't know if you went rooting for the Patriots, 
No? Thumbs down? Jaguars? Eagles? Or the Vikings? Eagles. Don't let, the, don't let that game get to you. Because tomorrow we got some stuff we got to deal with. That's right. They're making their money. That's right. We got some areas of opportunity we're going to have to deal with. I don't know what everybody's dealing with or what you're going through. I got nothing on my own. But here's what I do know. We all need God. That's right. And we all want his peace in the midst of the storm. Yes. I'm out of talk. And time. And breath. <laughs> Amen. But there may be someone here this morning. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. There's peace with God. Jesus says, this peace I give passes all understanding. And Isaiah says that uh, if we keep our minds stayed on him, mm. <laughs> uh, he will keep us yes. in perfect peace. And so nine times out of ten, Russell, we will magnify our problem and our circumstance and our situation and we'll minimize God. Mm. Come on. And then we'll run off and try to fix it ourselves. Right. Right. And then we make a mess of it. Yes. And then we come Sunday and we bring it to the altar and say, here Jesus, you can handle it. But we want to be proactive today. That before the storms and the tests and the trials come, We've already been anchored in grace that we stand. We've already been assured of the victory. But God wants to take us through. And here, here's what I know about ministry. What we deal with is not for us. We're just the instruments God's are using Amen. to walk us through it so we can bless someone else. Watch this. We didn't get to where we were. Yes. So now I've learned over the years that God will take us through. Amen. He'll see us through. Yes. Sean, I've seen where he removed storms before. But then I've seen times where the storm has remained. But yet he gives strength through the storm. He guarantees us he'll walk with us through the storm. He guarantees, as Jesus said, when we get to the other side, we'll be able to look back and know I don't wonder how I got over. I know how I got over. That's right. I know it was his unchanging hand. Life is full of surprises. Things we might not expect. Things just pop up on the radar. And when those moments come, my English teacher was famous, church, for giving pop quizzes. You sit down in your seat, come from recess, sweaty, tired, huffing and puffing from playing. She said, clear your desk. We're going to take a test. And the only time I was upset with that was when I didn't prepare. Amen. For the test, and I flunked every time. But when we're prepared for the test, That's right. God will grant us his peace. Who grant us the understanding that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That I'll walk with you through the storm. There may be one here this morning. I don't want to be remiss or not afford someone the opportunity. That pastor, I, I don't have the relationship that you and Paul are talking about. That I can stand in the grace that I can understand that his love was so great for me that he died for me. Let me qualify that for you. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. That's right. His arms are spread wide. How do I know? I just look at Calvary and the cross. And thank God he didn't stay there. Amen. They put him in a tomb and then sealed it with a stone. But his love for us oh, goes dude. further than that. Because on the third day, he rolled the stone away. Amen. And he walked out and declared, all victory is in my hand. And so now the power that we have 
God says, I want to give that to you. Yes. If there's one this morning, I don't know what you're dealing with or the situation or the circumstance is. I just want to afford you God. I want to push him in the front and take hold of him and see what he can do. Try. Prove him. And see if he won't perform that which he said he would do. He's not a man that can lie. That's right. When they get ready to vote one o'clock in the morning and they're trying to pass a, a gap measure to keep the government funded. God's already up and running. He watching over that. And that doesn't make a difference with him. So we can trust him in all that he says. Joe's going to give us a selection. Someone may be making up their mind. Peace with God.